Hi, shalom friends. Let me tell you how a carrot and egg and coffee beans taught little Bobby a most important lesson for life. The story goes that Bobby came home and he was very, very upset because um, he had tried unsuccessfully to do to accomplish something in school and the teacher said, I'm sorry, you didn't make the grade. And he was very frustrated and upset and wanted to know how can he overcome this great feeling of, of despair. So his mother said, look, and took out three pots, filled them all with the same amount of water, and took out from the fridge a carrot and an egg, and from the closet some instant coffee. And with a great fanfare, she took out a timer and she put it on for 20 minutes. And then when the, it was boiling, she put the carrot into the boiling water, the egg into the boiling water, and the coffee into the boiling water, and they waited for the buzzer to buzz. 20 minutes later, she says to Bobby, and now you will have your answer. She takes out the carrot, and she takes out the egg, and she pours out the coffee. And she says to Bobby, look at the carrot. Do you remember the carrot before it was put into the boiling water? It was hard. Now look at the carrot, it's soft. She said, some people, when they try to do something and they're not successful, they become broken. They were once hard and now they become very, very soft. And because they're soft, they don't want to try anything anymore. But look at the egg. Let's open up the egg. She cracks open the egg, and it is a hard egg. And she said, before the boiling water, this egg was soft inside. With the boiling water, the outside of the egg hasn't changed, but the inside has from soft to hard. Some people, when they deal with failure, they make believe externally that it really doesn't bother them. They're the same people. But deep inside, they're actually quite hard. They're brittle. They're upset. But look at the coffee. Putting the, the coffee into boiling water has changed that we have, the water has now not only absorbed the taste of the coffee, but something has been created, a very delicious beverage. So there are other people that will deal with frustration and failure in a wholesome way, where they're not going to fight it, but instead they learn from it. And actually the experience itself creates something newer, something better, something actually more complete. Now this is, a, I suppose, a fable, but it's really very, very true. There are those people that when something negative happens to their life, they just simply confront it head on, and the stronger one wins. So if they fail, they feel broken, they're soft, and they won't try again. But that's ridiculous, because no one lives in a world where there aren't challenges, and it's impossible to live a life avoiding confrontation. So instead, the way to absorb um, life is by understanding that each and every encounter with something is a lesson, a challenge, and an opportunity. When we take a look at uh, our own personal life, and we find ourselves sometimes getting upset, or losing our temper, or being frustrated, or occasionally, we feel envy and jealousy and so on and so forth. We could just simply throw up our hands and say, you know what, I'm just a failure. I'm a moral failure and I'm not going to try anymore. So either I'm just going to make peace with the fact that I'm not a good person or alternatively, what I will do is disengage. I will have very little to do with anyone. I don't trust myself to have an honest relationship because deep down, that person that are having the relationship doesn't even imagine, cannot imagine what I'm really thinking. 
But that's ridiculous. Instead, when a person is, for example, has a twinge of jealousy or envy, stop yourself and ask, what am I feeling and why? And then you could go a step further and say to yourself, um, I have an opportunity right now whether to indulge in this feeling or to transcend this feeling. What can I do to transcend it? Well, you could go to, you could, for example, say a prayer. Believe it or not, when you're jealous about your friend, you could actually say a prayer. Pray to God that he become even more successful. You say, what kind of a prayer is that when it's not sincere? But you know, it might become sincere. When you begin to focus on the goodness of your friend, the goodness of his success, and how his goodness will bring a benefit to all. In fact, they say a charming story where there was uh, one gentleman who had some type of a hardware store and a fellow um, congregant, actually, in this, they would worship in the same synagogue, opened up an, a hardware store two blocks away. And this fellow was be, be, beyond, beside himself. I'm barely making it now. Two blocks away, he's going to steal all my customers. And of course, when he consulted with the spiritual leader, the spiritual leader um, mentioned to him, you can't steal someone else's customer. Everyone has their customer. God is, will send you this person that, you spo- that, would, that is supposed to walk into your store. He will come in any case. And he said, Rabbi, you're talking like an angel. In the world of business, it doesn't work like that. I need something that will bring customers into my store. And the rabbi then said as follows, you know what you should do every day? You should pray that your friend be successful. The Talmud tells us that he who prays for someone else is answered first. So if you will pray on behalf of your competitor, Hashem will listen to your prayer and send people to you. Now, this is a metaphysical concept, but what happens if I told it to you in a very practical sense? The more people that come to his store, the greater the chance that they'll walk another two blocks to your store. Because that's what we call location, location, location. The more customers, the more potential customers, the better a chance of people coming to you. The point that I'm trying to make is, instead of looking at the competition as something that might break you, look at it as an opportunity to make, to, to make coffee. Look at it as an opportunity to galvanize yourself to make your store very attractive. And paradoxically, by hoping for his success and actually praying for his success, you will see uh, your own success and you will see it grow. This is true about everything. It's not only about business. So if you're privileged to have a family member that's having a wonderful marriage or is being very successful in raising their children, instead of being jealous of it or being seeing it as a, a competition, how come they're so success, successful and I'm not? On the contrary, use them as mentors. Instead of saying, I don't want to have anything to do with these people, say, what is the secret of their success? Maybe I could observe to, to pick up something. Maybe I could take the boiling water and mix it with a beverage and create something really which is very, very delicious. We have plenty of opportunities. Plenty, plenty of opportunities to grow. Our job really is to take these opportunities and to use them for what they were given for, for the purpose of growth. Shalom and good luck in your spiritual growth.